I want to read you from something said by Hezekiah the priest. This is one of uh, the desert fathers. They, they call them the desert fathers. And this is from the Philokalia and its watchfulness. He wrote a beautiful little piece of writing in the Philokalia called Watchfulness. I think he called it on watchfulness and holiness. He said, listen to what Hezekiah said. He said, if we have not attained prayer that is free from thoughts, we have no weapon to fight with. By this prayer, I mean the prayer which is ever active in the inner shrine of the soul and which by invoking Christ scourges and sears our secret enemy. Watchfulness is a continual fixing and halting of thought at the entrance to the heart. Watchfulness is a way of embracing every virtue, every commandment. It is the heart's stillness. And when free from mental images, it is the guarding of the intellect. Attentiveness is the heart's stillness, unbroken by any thought. So, this is very good. So now, do you understand how I said that you have to learn how to watch, stand back and watch thought parade by? Here are the foolish arguments of people without even letting them register. Do you understand? So when you have this meditative stance, when you practice the meditation, it gives you a little bit of mental distance. This little bit of distance where your soul is the observer, that's actually what he was talking about, what Hezekiah was talking about. He said, watchfulness is the continual fixing and halting of thought at the entrance to the heart. Do you understand? So, here's a classic example. You go to a grocery store, and there's a magazine there with the naughty picture on the front cover. Okay, so there it is. You couldn't help but see it. There it was, right in front of you. So there it was. And now... Later, all of a sudden, that naughty picture comes back to your mind. Do you understand? Do you see? Now, were you wrong for seeing that picture? No. Are you wrong for it coming back into your mind again? No. So, you don't have to feel guilty for seeing it. You don't have to have feel guilty for that thought flitting through your mind. All kinds of thoughts will flit to your mind. Mean thoughts, revenge thoughts. Naughty thoughts, improper thoughts, silly thoughts, all kinds of thoughts will flit through and you're not guilty for those, for those thoughts flitting through your mind. You're only guilt, you only will acquire guilt should you attempt to use the thought, for example, to escape. I'll give an example. Uh, let's say you really should have a talk with your partner or with your child about something or you have some responsibility, something that you should do, that you should attend to properly. And instead you escape on a daydream of fantasy with a naughty image. Do you see how that, that after that, can you see how you'll come up feeling, feeling um, sullied? You know, it's like mud wrestling. If you get into a mud wrestling match with someone, you're going to come up all covered with mud, aren't you? So if you float away with those thoughts, whatever, whatever they are, then you're going to come up feeling yucky. See what I mean? Now, understand this. Understand this. It's not the thought that's wrong. So you mustn't, it's not the thought that makes you wrong. It's the struggling with it or floating away with it, see, or resenting it. So any involvement, if you resent yourself, if you start saying, oh, I'm no good, I'm terrible, I'm blah, blah, blah. See, you're just falling into more, into more thoughts. Where they come from? Who knows? Just let them go by. Don't pay them any mind. Don't struggle with the thoughts on the one hand. Don't give in and float away with them on the other. Just stand back and watch. You understand? This mental distance that you get from meditation, it comes naturally. It gives you the proper perspective. And in that way, you are guarding your heart. You understand? So that's very important. So I hope I've made it clear that you can. So now do you begin to see how you can have a rather pure heart.
even if there's a naughty thought flitting through your mind? Can you see how you can have a rather pure heart, even if a, a thought of getting even with someone, or a jealous thought, or a hateful thought, she flits through your mind? Can you see? And can you see how you can have a rather pure heart if a doubt thought flits through your mind, a thought that says to you, well, you're no good, God doesn't care, what's the use trying, you blah, 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 see? Just let, him, let those thoughts flip by. They're not your thoughts. Who knows where they came from? But just let them go by without, without paying them any mind. Yes, they may be at times a bit troubling. Yes, okay, so a little trouble, but don't struggle with them. Just watch them and let them go. Okay? So, then I think that's very helpful. And I want to read you one more thing. This is very interesting. This is something that I stumbled upon. This is about the prayer of the heart. So now do you understand that if the mind, the intellect, is kind of a no man's land where things flit across it, you could almost think of your mind almost like a radio sitting on the table. And when you turn the dial on the radio, it turns to different frequencies, and then all kinds of different stuff comes through it. Doesn't it? All different stations come through, all kinds of stuff. Your mind is something like that. And so when you are resentful, for example, then it's kind of tuned to a frequency where there's going to be some source, who knows what it is, of negative resentful thoughts will be there. And you see, so basically, you have to learn to question your tricky thoughts. So even when you pray, why? What if some the thoughts that come to your mind, the prayer thoughts, where do they come from? Well, they, they may be from the same source that's that's coming up with the with the naughty thoughts. See? So that's why you don't need to verbalize it. Just sit quietly and become still. That's what Henry Guillaume called the prayer of the heart. Now listen to this. This is very, very good. This is from Calpius, another mystic, who said, Inward prayer is the nourishment of the soul. It is in this holy rest that the soul obtains the strength which is needed for her. As the way and manner of performing this inward prayer, there is one which is of such a nature that no man can be put into it. It is the passive prayer. But there is also an active prayer into way of men ought to be said. This active prayer may be performed in two ways. One with words out of the heart, either with mouth or the thoughts. And the other is the prayer of the heart, without words or thoughts. And this is incomparably more beneficial than the other, and is far more acceptable to God. For one may pray without forming or uttering of any words, without consideration or speculation of the mind, without holding rational discourses or making conclusions, yea, without knowing the least thing in a manner relative to the outward senses. And this prayer is the prayer of the heart, the unutterable prayer, the most perfect of which is the fruit of love. The pure love prays and resigns itself to God. So this is very, very beautiful because it also says somewhere that in the Bible, I think Paul says that we don't know what to pray for. He said that the Holy Spirit will pray for us. So I think it would be good for you to ponder what I have said today and to uh, to practice the little meditation in all of its sheer simplicity. Call it a prayer of the heart. Learn to be still. And uh, what does it say in the Bible? It says, trust in the Lord with all your heart and lean not on your own understanding. Your thoughts can be very tricky. Sure, if you meditate properly and 
then you are closer to God and you go out in the world and thoughts, yes, you, you may download in this very proper meditation some spiritual light, some essence comes into you from above, from God's light. And this essence then becomes thought. So then good thoughts, noble thoughts, noble things to do and proper things to pursue are inspired come to you from God. So those are good thoughts. But can you see there's a difference between the thoughts that flow from the inner light, from intuition? There's a difference between that and being separated from God and intuition, going out in the world and becoming upset, and then falling into all kinds of thoughts that come to you in that emotional upset state. There's a big difference. And You'll be able to sort out the difference between the higher thoughts and the lower thoughts. And you'll begin to be able to question subtle thoughts that try to trick you. You'll be able to watch them slip by. Just like naughty, naughty schoolboys. You know, all of a sudden you're, you're walking down the street and here comes a bunch of naughty schoolboys running by. They're up to no good. That's the way your thoughts are. Just learn to watch them as if they were naughty schoolboys. And... Practice your little meditation diligently every morning and evening and midday, and you'll be safe.